the subject right now is a neural reflex. Whenever you see those two words, you should realize that it's all about the nervous system. Okay, all about the neural system. And a reflex, a pure neural reflex, is wired when the animal is an embryo. So in utero, when the dog, cat, or horse in our cases are embryos, nerves are being laid down that will be involved in this reflex after the animal is born. Okay, and since we all probably love dogs, I want to talk about the scratch reflex. And we know what that looks like. Here's an example. I'll enlarge it a little bit. Somebody has their dog and they're scratching with this hand here, maybe both. And then this leg is scratching the air right now. Okay. And I do want to point out that it's always the leg on the same side as the scratching occurs. And so I want to introduce this word. Maybe you uh, are familiar with it. But when you scratch, and this is the dog's right side, the right rib cage, it's always the ipsilateral rear leg that responds in this reflex. Okay, so it can be in the chest area, thorax area, or it can be scratching up in the neck area, as in this example, and I'll block out that for right now. I guess I can still use the word ipsilateral. There it is. Perfect. So she's scratching the neck, and the ipsilateral rear leg of the dog is moving. And for us, this is a spinal reflex. So now, let's show you the parts of a spinal reflex, sometimes called a reflex arc, maybe called a spinal reflex arc, like this artist drew it. Okay, so let me get you started here. Now, what's interesting is I'm going to put the laser pointer here and say this is the upper part of the animal, dorsal, and this is ventral. So this is facing the belly of the animal. Of course, if it's the spinal cord, it's all in the vertebral column. But this is dorsal, this is ventral, and when you do a transverse section, that means you cut perpendicular to the long axis. So you get a cross-sectional view, an end kind of view of the structure. Okay, so then up here, would be your sensory receptors that are part of the scratch reflex in our example. They get activated. There's a certain threshold amount of pressure that has to be obtained. And then the action potentials travel on this sensory nerve to what's called the dorsal root. And that's why I told you where dorsal is. Remember, dorsal is here. Everything that's sensory comes in the spinal cord on the dorsal root. This doesn't show it, but there's another one on this side, okay, because animals are bilateral. Well, in this case, there's a synapse here, and then you could call it an interneuron, and there's another synapse here, but then we're going to send a message out on a motor nerve. We've had that before. A motor nerve moves a muscle or a gland. In this case, it's the rear muscle, muscles in the rear leg, and once the action potential gets down here, and we know acetylcholine is released down here, and the muscle contracts, and we get the scratching. Okay, now what activates the receptor? Well, my previous pictures showed people scratching the animal, but I want to tell you that it could be something like a horsefly. Here's the horsefly coming up. Look how big he is compared to that other fly there. So horse flies, if you're not familiar with them, they're really nasty. But it's kind of a defense mechanism for a dog. If you initiate this scratch reflex, then the back leg comes and scratches away whatever's irritating the dog. So let's just do a little summary of this scratch reflex now.
okay. Sometimes reflexes have more than one name, but in this case, there really are no other names for the scratch reflex in the dog. The stimulus, that's what initiates the whole process. Well, something irritating on the surface of the skin, and in this case, it says the dorsal or lateral surfaces of the thorax, which would be basically the chest cavity, and the neck. There are going to be receptors in that area. We don't really get into this much, but tactile means they sense touch. And pain receptors are separate receptors that like that horsefly, if that bit the dog, it would definitely activate some pain receptors. Well, they're all going to go afferent because afferent nerves take things to the spinal cord. So afferent fibers run. There's a number of synapses in the spinal cord. And then the grand purpose of the scratch reflex is to remove whatever's irritating the skin that initiated this whole reflex. Okay, well, cats, can't forget about beautiful cats. You know, cats tend to right themselves if they fall off someplace high, or don't try this at home, if you throw them up, they tend to rotate, and it's called the writing reflex. And they're pretty good at it. Probably not 100%, but they're incredible at this writing reflex and you got to remember, if it's a neural reflex, which it is, they were born with it. And I like this word innate. That's why I probably put this whole paragraph up here. Innate. It's an innate reflex. It's going to be activated without learning. There are some learning reflexes that are, get kind of complicated. But anyway, the innate writing reflex is something that was wired when the animal was an embryo in its mother's uterus. And then it does work later, so you don't have to learn this reflex. Now I'd like to uh, show you a recently found reflex in dogs called the freedom reflex. It's interesting, and we've got a picture, thank, thankfully, for to some photographer. But this reflex is purely neural, I guess, and what happens is when a dog sees something on the other side of a fence that's highly motivating, the freedom reflex is activated. We probably have all had a dog sometime where it just has this propensity to be on the other side of a fence, and luckily somebody has caught a dog midstream here demonstrating the freedom reflex. So thanks to whoever took that picture. It looks like a number of years ago, but we have just named it now, the Freedom Reflex. Thank you.